Hey guys, my name is Stuart and today we're going to have a look at how to build a simple alarm using this kit. Before we get started with building, let's have a look quickly what you get inside. <clears throat> if you open your packet and you empty these bits and pieces out, you'll find that you've got one instruction sheet and that will show you what you've got. You can just check that you do get everything that you are supposed to have in your kit. So to start off with, You'll have a roll of thread, a piece of foam, a peg, a battery holder, a strip of aluminium foil, an alarm buzzer, a length of twin core wire, a funny little pull tab thing that looks like this, and two pieces of cardboard. You'll also have two AA batteries and hiding underneath those pieces, one little resistor, and one LED. Right, so what do you need to be able to make this project? Well, first you need a ruler. Doesn't have to be a fancy metal ruler like this one. Any ruler will do. You'll need some pens for marking and you'll need a knife or a pair of scissors and a cutting mat that you're going to be working on. The last thing you're going to need is a small roll of sticky tape and I don't think that's been supplied in your kits. Before we get started building, let's have a look at the simple overview of the circuit. This is an early prototype that I made before I compiled these kits just to see whether the concept works. First we've got two battery cells and these are what are powering our whole alarm system. You can see that we've got a positive wire, the red one coming out, and then the black is the negative wire. And that's actually running through the cardboard all the way through to this side and is coming out. And then I've twisted it onto another piece of wire that we're going to take through to make the complete circuit. Going from the positive, we start with going through a resistor and into the little buzzer. You've got a different buzzer in your kit, so you don't have to worry too much about this, but we'll just look at the circuit and how it works first. So we're going from a resistor into a buzzer from the positive side. Then another wire comes through, and you can have a look underneath here. They're just twisted onto the bottom of that. You'll do something very similar with yours. Then we run along, and the wire gets twisted in onto a piece of copper tape, you guys have aluminium tape, but this is a piece of copper, which has just been stuck with sticky tape down onto the top of the peg. Then we have, this is an insulator, this is the pull tab, and this is creating a simple trip wire. So if you t stuck this to the side of your door and you had a wire going across and it gets pulled out, your alarm goes off. So you can see you can see that the peg, when the peg closes, these metal contacts touch. It completes the circuit which is wired on to the black wire over there and that goes back to the battery. So we have a complete circuit going from positive through the resistor, through the speaker or the buzzer, through our switch which is made with the peg, through the wire all the way to the negative and we complete our circuit. Right, let's have a look at your circuit components. To start with, your buzzer looks a little bit different, but you still do have a positive and a negative wire. If you wire this the wrong way around, it's not going to work. Then we have our battery holder, and you can see the red wire and the black wire. So positive on the right-hand side here and negative on the left-hand side here. We, if we wanted to, we could put these two together red to red, black to black, and if we put batteries in here, our buzzer would go off, and we can test that, so let's give it a try. Right, I've stuck my batteries in, and I'm going to go positive to positive, and negative to negative. Let's see if this works. Sounds like it's working to me. So now we know that our battery pack is working, and our buzzer is working. Next, we wanna check how can we get the LED and the resistor to turn or the LED to turn on with the resistor? The reason we have this resistor is because the LED that we've got over here takes less than three volts. But we've got two 
batteries over here and each of these batteries provides one and a half volts and we've put them in series so we have three volts in total so this resistor all it's doing is just limiting how much current can flow through and doesn't damage this LED so let's give it a, a try when you start working with LEDs LEDs are polarized which means that they also have a positive and a negative if you have a look at your LED the one leg is longer and that is going to be the positive leg so I'm going to bend them out so it's easier to work with and I'm going to twist the resistor together the one side of the resistor with the long leg of the LED and I'm just going to bend it together doesn't have to be beautiful at this stage all we want is our LED and our resistor to be nice and tightly twisted together so it makes contact like that next we're going to take because we know that this side the resistor side is on the positive I'm going to touch it onto the wire of our battery pack and I'm going to touch it onto the side of our LED and we should get the light to turn on but it's not turning on so I must have done something wrong Ah, there we go now it's making contact so we know that our LED is working and our speaker is working now in reality this circuit is actually very very simple and I'm going to quickly complete this circuit and show you how everything's going to work first I need to make these wire ends a little bit longer so I'm going to remove some of the insulation off the ends of all the wires both on the speaker or the buzzer and on the battery side of things I'm going to carefully use my knife and I'm going to strip off some of the insulation so that I've got a bit more wire to work with there we've got a little bit more wire that's stripped so that we can use it more easily otherwise it gets very fiddly and we're not soldering things together so we need to be able to have a fair bit of wire to be able to twist at this stage we've got about a centimeter of wire sticking out on each piece um, that we've got here next what we're going to do is we're going to take the positive and the positive on the wire and the speaker and we're going to twist these together then we're going to take our LED with the resistor side remember that's the positive side and we're going to twist that in onto the circuit as well so all of those are twisted together and working now if I take the LED and I touch it onto the black side of the wire the light will go on if I touch this black side of the black wire of the speaker onto this too everything will start working and our alarm will be complete right but now how do we get this alarm to turn on when we want it to be on and off when we want it to be off because at the moment it's just stuck on that's not very helpful that's just really annoying so what we need is a switch and so what we're going to do to start with is I'm going to take the side of the wire with the speaker or the buzzer and I'm going to twist it onto the wire with the LED so in order for us to complete our circuit all we need to do is connect this onto that that's what our switch is going to do and we're going to be building our own switch so how do we build a switch well we're going to use this little peg a peg is a great tool to be able to use to keep a switch closed when we want it to be closed so that if we pull something out between it it's going to close and make contact right so how do we make it into a switch we first need the contact to start conducting so what we're going to do is we're going to take a section of our aluminium foil and we are going to measure it out at about 50 millimeters or five centimeters and we're going to cut two strips off at five centimeters long these blocks on my grid are five centimeters long so it's easy for me to work it out by doing that and that now there's a sticky side to the back of this 
and so you're going to have to peel off the copper tape oh, at least the aluminium tape from the backing and it can be a little bit tricky right now we've got the sticky side so I'm gonna start off I'm not gonna peel off the entire thing I'm gonna open the peg and then stick part of the tape onto the one side bring it all the way around let the peg close pull this out and run it down and then I'm not going to let it run all the way through I'm going to stop it just before the top of the peg reaches the spring and I'm just going to tear it off like that so now you can see we've got a nice shiny silver section on the inside of this peg and we're going to do the same thing on the other side cool so there we've got our two contact that open and close when we open and close our peg. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to attach our wires onto this side and this side so that these can make contact. So I'm going to take the one section of our alarm and we're going to stick it on there and I'm going to take the other side and stick it on there. You can see as soon as it connects it turns on if I open the peg, it turns off. Okay, that's enough. So how do we get it to stick there? And how do we get it to stop? Well, that's what this pull tab is for. So if you want your switch to be off, you need to put the pull tab between. This pull tab is made out of a thick cardboard and acts as an insulator. Next, you're going to grab your sticky tape and you're going to take the end of this wire and bend it back and twist it around itself. And there's a reason for this. We're going to just use that to give it a bit more body and we're going to now tape this section of our peg onto the insulator over here. Now the metal parts must be touching this metal over here must touch that metal and make a good contact otherwise our switch is not going to work properly. So you're going to take your sticky tape and cut some sections and stick it nice and tightly down onto our um, contact. Right, when you've done that, make sure that if the sticky tape goes around, it doesn't cover the inside of your contact over there. If it does, then you've insulated the contact and they're not going to make proper contact. But if you have a look here, there's still metal connecting to metal on this side. And so our connection is nice and, come on, focus please. There we go. There you can see we've got a nice metal on metal connection over there, but it's held in firmly with the sticky tape. The next we're going to touch this on this side you can see that it's still working and we're going to do the same thing that we did on this side with this section this part of our LED. Now if we don't want it to make a buzzing noise every time or while we're working with it your battery pack itself should have this little lever on it that you can pull out that separates these two batteries from being connected and so when you carry on working it's not going to keep making that annoying noise. So next we're going to use our sticky tape and tape this side of our circuit onto the top of the opposite end of our peg just like that. Alright, so sticky tape there. Right, now we've got our two sides connected together. We want to see if it does it work. So we're going to take our battery pack, connect it up again, and see. I think that some of my sticky tape is preventing it from sticking together nicely. Because if I push it together over here, it makes contact. But I have to push it a little bit, which means that something is not quite right. So what I can do is 
stick this back in the middle and all I need to do to get this to make more contact over there is put a little spacer between these or remove some of the sticky tape that I've got on the inside over here. Let me see which one's going to be easiest. Okay, so when you've finished making sure that your buzzer is connecting properly and when your switch closes nicely and it makes the noise, then it is up to you to see how you're going to turn this into a useful alarm. I've shown you how to make it work. You guys need to then use the cardboard that I've given you. You can extend the peg and separate it from the battery by using the wire over here. Do some research over there. You've got extra tape and this foam and as a separate project, you can also make a, a pressure sensitive alarm. So a switch that if you step on this, it'll make the alarm go off. But we're not gonna cover that in this video. And so are you going to make a trip wire? Are you gonna connect it to your window? If you wanna make a trip wire, you can take the string that you've got, thread it through the pull tab, tie it on. And when it's tied on, if you tie the one end to the one side of the door, you hide this carefully onto the other side of the door, and somebody walks through, trips on the wire, and the alarm goes off. And that's it. It will be awesome for you to show us what you build with your alarm kit, and uh, we hope that you had a lot of fun as you built it.